Good morning. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, so I'll be presenting this uh, session, turning relational database tables into uh, uh, Spark data sources. Um, Safe Harbor, this is the legal disclaimer from my company. <laughs> okay. Um, this is me. I work for Oracle. I do product management. I take care of several products, you know, integration with Java, embedded in the database, outside the database, Hadoop, Spark. Uh, we're looking into Flink as well. Um, JavaScript, uh, embedded in the database or as a client, etc., etc. Graduate from Paris, French accent, etc. Um, this is the agenda, so we'll quickly talk about why are we doing this, you know, why do you need to turn a relational tables into Spark data source. And then we look at Apache Spark, I mean, if people are familiar with Spark, I will skip. Uh, how many people here are familiar with Spark? And, uh, oh, <laughs> everybody. Okay, so I'll skip that part, I uh, will go quickly. And then we'll go into the substance, which is how are we doing that? How are we turning relational tables into a Spark data source? I'll give you a demo which will explain some of the concepts, and then we'll wrap up. I have 40 minutes. I think I have 39 now. OK, so requirements. Um, why are we doing that? Well, so imagine your VP of sales or VP of marketing, you know, comes to your office and say, hey, can you tell me which of our products got f ratings of four on social media in the last quarter? Okay, so to answer this question, it could be some other question, I'm just making this up. Uh, also to answer this question, you need um, master data. Master data are products, customer, you know, those are data that you use across applications in your company. And there is only one version, you know, one instance, and they are usually stored and kept in relational databases. But you also need uh, so big data, you know, you need the tweets, all those things from social media, because the question is uh, which product got a rating of four or higher on social media in the last quarter. So you need both data. Okay, so how do you reconcile data stored on those different places? Well, you have two approaches. Uh, you can copy over from RDBMS, because this is a smaller data set compared to big data, so it's a smaller set. So usually, customers, I mean people we know of, copy over. They copy over from RDBMS to Spark, so they can do all the join locally, okay? Um, that's good, but the problem is uh, data keeps moving, you know, the, the, the master data keeps moving, and when you copy, maybe it's already behind, so you need to repeat the operation, and I, I mean, tell you the truth, I have met customers, they do that every hour. So every hour you copy over, but that could be hundreds of megabytes or gigabytes of data. So that's not really practical. And uh, you need to, okay, so the other approach, uh, this is one of the approach I will be presenting, is to turn the RDBMS table into Spark data source. But you don't want to move data. It's not like you're going to suck data uh, transparently through the connector. So we want to pr minimize data movement. We want to minimize, you know, uh, data, you know, preparation, whatever. And you want to preserve all the security you got from the RDBMS. Okay, so Apache Spark, I think most of you are familiar, so I'm going to just skip. Um, this is a talk I g I've given at Java One and also at uh, Oracle Code Online, so I need to tell some people what is Spark. You know, some people might not know Spark, so I need to tell them that. Okay, so I go quickly through them. I talk about data frame, data source API, etc. The big picture, and you can see at the bottom that there are a provision to access RDBMS from Spark uh, data source API. Um, talk about uh, some data point, you can, don't care about that. How Apache Spark works, you know, Spark uh, starts with the, the context, etc. 
the dark, etc. You know, this is an a very basic example I've taken from the internet, which is uh, you know how to go from the HDFS into the Hadoop RDD and then do some transformation, and, you know, always transformation and then apply some persistence on the final data you want to preserve. Um, this is uh, the workflow, you know, where you go from um, the application and then you go from the different transformation I just showed you in the back and then you turn those into tasks, you know, and you schedule the tasks. So, and then the task got uh, dispatched over worker nodes, and that's where they have been processed. So that's how it works, and you're probably familiar. Uh, you're also familiar that Spark does not come out of the box with a streaming capability. The engine is batch-oriented. It's a micro-batch, but still it's batch. So uh, to process streaming data, you need uh, Spark streaming, which is an additional uh, framework that you use on top of your Spark cluster. Um, this is, uh, those are the streaming data concepts. You know, I ask, you know, usually when I present to people, I say, oh, there will be a quiz after this slide because I need to ask you what is the timestamp, you know? What is uh, the event time, the processing time, the, 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 the ingestion time, you know, and I usually take the Star Wars movies where the, the movie, the sequence of the movie is different from the history. If you look at the story in the book, it's different. Um, so in order processing, out of order processing, some frameworks are capable of dealing with that, some are not, et cetera, et cetera. So those are some concepts that you are probably familiar with, but those are streaming data processing concepts. Okay, I'm going now to the substance of my presentation. Uh, this is, okay, so in order to achieve what we want to achieve, we need to look at what's there, what is the provision in the Spark to allow us to do that. So what you have is, you have the data source API, okay, and then you have the data frame API, and this is how you will pr produce a data frame from the RDD, from the schema in Scala, and then you have the SQL interpreter and optimizer, and the SQL service, we don't care about the SQL service for this purpose. Um, okay, so, so to do, so this is the idea. You want to access your RDBMS table from Spark. It means you want to be able to have parallel access to the table. So how do you manage to have parallel access to one single table in your RDBMS? I'm not talking about sharded databases. This is something we also need to look into, you know, when you have multiple shards on separate databases. But let's say we have one single table. How do you manage to get parallel access to one single table? Uh, so you need to do some logical partitioning. And uh, in the Spark uh, framework, they provision something called partitioners. So partitioners allow you to do logical partition of the table. For example, you have uh, 100 uh, Spark nodes, so you want to have 100 simultaneous connection to the database accessing that same table. So how do you do that? Uh, I'll explain a little bit how we're doing that. So that's something you need to, this is important, you need to do that. Okay, so the Spark itself furnishes a JDBC uh, interface. If you look at the data source API, there is a JDBC interface. Okay, it provides a predicate push down, you know, or the where clause, you can push down to the RDBMS. Remember, we don't want to ship all the table onto SPA. You want to sh push down the predicate or everything else to the RDBMS and only recoup the result set. So it provides some predicate push down and some basic uh, partitioning capabilities. So that's what you have out of the box. But the problem is it's not enough. So all the database vendors, you know, whether it's Microsoft, IBM, Oracle, or whatever, and DBMS, you know, the NoSQL database vendors, you know, the Cassandra, et cetera, they are all coming up with their own uh, Spark connector because they go beyond the out-of-the-box solution in Spark. So they will give you more 
capability of the partitioning, you know, how you can slice things in the most uh, efficient way. Uh, I'm showing you the class diagram of what we are building, you know, for the Oracle database. And you can see that at the bottom, you start with the data frame, you know, uh, inst uh, instruction from your application. And uh, we need to use the default data source. And from there, we have the Oracle JDBC relation. And then we have the Oracle JDBC RDD, which is where the actual access of the table is happening. That's where all the scan are happening. That's where we also do type conversion, etc. So I'll explain all those later. So this is what we're using you know, in our implementation. And these are all the optimization that we have uh, been injecting into the, the product. So I'll go into each of those. Uh, the most important are the partitioners. So we have custom partitioners. I will explain what these are. Um, the predicate push down, projection push down. For example, when you select uh, columns, um, you select a subset of all the columns of the table. So we need to push down that selection. That's called the projection. And the predicate, the work close. Partition pruning, I will explain. Partition pruning is uh, where, um, so let's say you have 100 access to the table. You have um, logically partitioned your table, let's say, into 100 partitions. But the query can be satisfied with only one or two partitions. So you don't want to access the, the remaining 98 partition. You only create two, work, I mean, two tasks. And those two tasks will access only two partitions that are sufficient to answer the query. Uh, so that's partition pruning. Um, shard awareness, uh, well, if you have a sharded database, you need to be able to direct the, the worker nodes you know, to different shards. And uh, type conversion, uh, I'll explain. Um, connection properties, I will explain. Connection caching, we'll explain. Authentication, uh, you can go from the <coughs> traditional username and password into more strong authentication, you know, like Kerberos, Redius, et cetera. Encryption, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the optimization that we are <coughs> making into our implementation. Partitioner or splitter. Um, you can see the definition if you go to that uh, doc. You know, I, I put the short link. Um, so right now, as we speak, we have uh, five uh, partitioner. We also call them splitter. Um, the reason is we start this whole thing with Hadoop. You know, we have uh, provided the mechanism where you can turn Oracle tables into Hadoop data source. And in Hadoop uh, vocabulary, they call those uh, splitters. And that's why I'm saying splitter or partitioner, but it's the same thing. So we have a single splitter, which means the whole table is treated as one logical partition. So there is no parallelism, only one task. Then we have row splitter. Let's say your table have one million rows. I mean, it could be much more than that, but let's say one million rows. And you have, you have uh, 100 um, processing nodes. So you want to divide the 1 million by 100, so that 10,000 rows. So each uh, partition will have 10,000 rows. That's how you will access the same table with 100 nodes. And each of them will be processing one partition. Um, so this is, uh, um, this is very important. Uh, we also have the block splitter, where instead of rows, you can use block count. It's your table have 10,000 blocks, and you have uh, 100 uh, nodes. You, you can divide by, 10, by 100, and then you have 100. 100 by 100 is 10,000 blocks, for example. Um, the other is partition splitter, where if your table is already partitioned, because in RDBMSs, the table can be partitioned. Okay? So if the table is already partitioned, we just map uh, the logical partition, the logical Spark partition, to the table partition. So it's one to one. That's, it's, a, uh, it's a possibility that you can use as well. Uh, also, we could extend that notion to shards. If you have multiple shards 
if your database is a sharded database and you have multiple shards, you could use the partition splitter or some other mechanism to map each worker node to a, a shard. And then we have the custom splitter. The custom splitter means we give you the possibility to use your own query, your own SQL statement, to do the partitioning, the, 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 the split. And because maybe you want to do something we don't keep you out of the box, and you have a better way of splitting, um, the log logically splitting the table with your processing node. So we give you this capability of using your own user-defined uh, query. OK. Um, so, OK, this is how you will uh, start Spark shell. You know, we give the, the jar file, different jar file, including the JDBC jar file and the software itself. You know, I put dot, 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 but, but it's, uh, you can imagine what it is. And then um, you can create your data frame. You can see the val tf. You know, this is how you will create the data source. And you can see here, you specify, um, you are specifying the connect string. So different connect string, you know, this is the traditional Oracle connect string, the Oracle JDBC driver. That's the name of the table, the database table. This is the username password, but this is for demo purposes. I think in real life, we recommend that you use more strong authentication, such as Kerberos, SSL, Reduce. Uh, Etc. And it's uh, it's not uh, different from this, but it's more secure. And this is how you specify the partition that you're using. Here we're using the block splitter, and you can also say I don't want more than four partition, you know, because the splitter might give you 1,000 split, you know, if the algorithm is not well defined. Uh, you can cap this and say maximum number of split or partition is this number. In this example, we say maximum partition is four, but it could be more than that. <laughs> OK, and then you can, you can load, you can create the data frame. This is the definition, and this is where you actually create the data frame. But there is no rows fetch right now. This is where the rows are fetched, and you can implement some filter. This is the where close. So this is the where close, and then you can say, show me the results. So that's how you could use this uh, with this uh, Spark shell. OK, so other optimization. Oh, one thing I didn't mention. When I say uh, split and uh, we divide logically by 100, we rewrite the query for each split. You know, the software will rewrite your query because uh, the database has no idea this is coming from Spark. And if you want one task to access only one logical split, you need to rewrite the query and say, OK, you execute this query where row ID from 1 to 10,000. On the next guy, you need where row ID from 10,001 to 20,000, et cetera, et cetera. So under the cover, the software rewrites the query for each of the partitioner. And then uh, type conversion. This is important because we are going from SQL types to Java types because we're using JDBC to access the database. So we're going from a SQL type to Java types to Spark type. OK, that's double conversion. So to avoid that, in the driver, we have provision some mechanism where we can go straight from SQL type to Spark without the intermediate um, conversion. You know. So some, you know, we, we, we can provide you some uh, row bytes. Uh, we can provide you the representation, the byte representation of date, time, et cetera, et cetera. OK. Uh, connection property, uh, all the JDBC properties are allowed. For example, you can specify the fetch size, you know, the, to do array fetch, you know, you don't want to get rows one by one, so you can specify how much row, how many rows do you want for for each fetch, you know, the result set. Connection caching means um, so I have I have generated hundred partition, but I don't have hundred worker nodes. I only have fifty. Which means I have to 
I have, to, I have to do this in two steps. The first step, I will use 50 tasks, and they will execute the 50 partition, and then I will, re I will use the same 50 workers with uh, the, 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 the remaining set of the, the partitions. So in order for, to, to, we don't want to recreate the connection you know, in order to do that, so we, we cache the connection. It's not connection pooling. It's connection caching within each worker. So the worker will reuse that same connection with the same authentication and to process the remaining partition. But at the end of the query, it's over. So for each query, you have to have a different authentication because that's for security reason. Because you might be accessing a different table. So we don't keep that. We don't keep the connection when the query is over. But until the query is over, we have the possibility of caching to reuse within the same worker. And the authentication, so you have uh, all the authentication that JDBC allows you, you know, the SSL, Kerberos, Reduce, Wallet, JKS, et cetera, et cetera. Um, HA, you know, all the database HA capabilities that the JDBC driver uh, gives you, you get those for free uh, through the connector. Um, runtime balancing of requests. You know, let's say you have a cluster of database and uh, you know that some nodes are overloaded, some nodes are not very loaded, so you want to, to, you want to, to balance the, the request, the connection request across all the different nodes. You know, all the nodes are accessing the same table, but the connection to the node are, you know, you can, so you, you, you see what I mean. Okay, um, time for demo. So through the demo, I think you will better understand everything I just said, <laughs> I hope. Uh, so I have a virtual box here. Okay, so the virtual box, uh, it's, it's called the big data light. You know? So big data is the Oracle um, big data cluster. Uh, it has both Hadoop, Spark, etc. To help people play with, we have this virtual box called BDA Lite. And it's a virtual box you can download from the Oracle Technology Network. And it has everything. It has the database, it has the Spark, the Hadoop, all sort of software. So that's what I'm using to show you the demo. OK, so the demo is a bunch of script. I'll, have, uh, the, I'll, I'll, create, I'll show you how to create the Oracle table, how it is created. I'll show you how we do a predicate pushdown. How do you specify, you know, do you want to do, uh, how do, uh, we'll see how predicates push down, uh, partition, uh, non-pruning, and partition pruning, and join. So I'll show you all those. And uh, so the way I have this shell script and I have the Scala file. For example, okay, let me show you the table first. So this script will create the table, and uh, you can see here that we are using this file, which is the a SQL, which is a SQL uh, file. So let me show you what this is. Uh, uh, employee data. Okay. Um, so this script will create the, a table. So we're dropping the table, uh, we're creating the table. And uh, you see this is a partition table. And it has five partition, and the, the partition key is the salary. So every salary less than 60,000 go into this partition. And ta, ta, ta. So you see a five partition depending on your salary. And we also have something called employee bonus report. This is where we will insert the bonus from the employees. We will use this when we do the join. OK, so and then I have, uh, OK, so now let's go into the sum of the demo. I have uh, 15 minutes. OK, that's good. View predicate, predicate push down dot sh. So you can see here this file is invoking Spark Shell, you know, with uh, all the Java files, different Java files. But more importantly, it's uh, using this Scala file. Okay, 
So let's look at what is in this scala file. In this scala file, you can see here we are creating this data frame, okay, with uh, all the specification, the URL, the, the URL to connect, the <coughs> driver, the name of the employee table, the username, password, blah, 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 and then we, 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 we are doing a transformation, you know, we're doing a data frame filter, and where we're adding the query, which is the select, blah, 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 blah. And then I also add explain to show you the explain plan so you can see what is exactly being uh, done. Okay, so if I execute predicate.sh, it will invoke the Spark shell and will uh, use the Scala file I just showed you. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the demo and everything is on my laptop, you know. So the virtual box, everything is here. So don't look at this as a, an indication of speed, okay. So what's going here under the cover here is that, uh, oh, I did not show you the, the specification of the splitter. Okay, I will have to look into that later. But it will show you which is the split that has been used. So what is happening now is uh, the software, you know, our co connector will take the query, will get the, an execution plan from the, the, the Scala uh, query optimizer and uh, we'll introspect the table and based on the partition key that it's been given, you know, and the, the partition, oh, sorry, the partition is single splitter. You know, this is the partition, it's a single splitter, which means there will be only one um, split generated, okay? Because we say uh, sp uh, single split, so max split equal one, only one split will be generated, and you can see number of split generated, this is here, it's one, okay? And uh, we can see that the predicate has been pushed down, and if you look at the plan, you can see that the predicate was pushed down and the where close was pushed down. So the result set that was retrieved from the database is this one. In other words, the database process the query and return only one single row. Okay. So Spark just received that row. It does not do, did not do any work. <laughs> Let me look at some other. Uh, so Spark, pretty, uh, uh, partition, partition non-pruning. Sorry. <coughs> Partition on pruning, SH, you know, it's the same thing. I'll show you the Scala because it invoked the Scala file. So I'll just show you the Scala file. Okay. Oh, man. View, 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 view. Oh, it's a view, yeah, sorry. Okay, so uh, creating the data frame, and this is uh, the partition splitter here, we specify partition splitter. So remember the table has five partition, right? And uh, we, it's the same query as the previous one, it's the same, select employer, blah, 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 with a where close. Okay, so let's execute and see what happens. Okay, so I come here. No. Okay, partition on pruning, SH. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we will look at how many uh, partition have been generated and whether or not the predicate has been pushed down or not. Those are the two things we will look at. So the software connect to the table and based on the partition splitter that it was given, it will generate a number of uh, partition and rewrite the query for each of them. So the, it's not a dumb uh, connector, it's, uh, it's smart, it can recreate the query, the Oracle database query, and the syntax might be different from the Spark SQL statement, okay? So it's not the same dialect. Uh, okay, so what we're seeing here is that the partition, the type, it recognizes that is okay. 
And then how many partition has been generated is the uh, number of split generated five. So all five tasks access the database and each of them was processing its own partition. And then we retrieve the, the, the result set. Okay, now I'll show you how we do partition pruning. Okay, partition pruning, we will view partition pruning. Scala. Okay, same thing here. We specify the partition splitter, username, password, everything else, but the query is different. This query, um, so you see the workload is based on salary. A salary higher than 72,000 and lower than 78,000. And then we'll explain the plan. Okay, so let me SH. Okay, so in principle, it should only generate one split because uh, only one partition has this salary range, so it does not need to access the other partitions, and that's a partition pruning. Okay, so it uh, connects, it, it takes the Scala, I mean, it takes what was, it was given as options, and uh, the, the plan that it gets from the, Scala, uh, the Spark, um, uh, Spark query optimizer, and it will generate the number of partitions, rewrite the query for each of them, and uh, we will see that in this case, only one partition, only one split has been generated, and you can see here one partition, and then the predicate has been pushed down. So it pushes down the where clause, which is the salary range. Okay, okay, that's good. Uh, last thing I want to show you, uh, we have eight minutes. I can take some question after that. So uh, view join.sh. So here we will use the join.scala. Okay, let's me look at the join.scala. Uh, okay, so we create the data frame from the employee data. We use the block splitter. Okay, and then we register that. We register that data frame, you know, as employee data oracle. And now we select, we have another query here, another query here, okay, which is joining, you know, that data with a local data, a local Spark data. Okay, to produce the, the result, okay. So the where clause is uh, employee bonus, uh, um, no, the, the bonus is higher than 7,000 and the salary is higher than 70,000. Only those people will receive a bonus. And the bonus, employee bonus is on Spark. Okay, so we're joining data from Spark and data in RDBMS, which is the, the use case I, I start my talk with. Okay, so let's execute. Um, it's here. Okay, this is a two step, so it's gonna take a little bit more time. It will first execute the first query, register the first data frame, register, and then do the second one. And it will generate four, four splits uh, to do that. Okay, so while this is happening, I think I can take question. We have uh, seven minutes uh, left. I'm happy to take a few questions. Um, the software is not yet uh, released. It's uh, under development. And every, I mean, functionally, it's almost done because everything I show you is based on the alpha or beta version of the software. Um, the thing we're still looking at is the sharding, sharding support and uh, some other stuff, you know, minor stuff, but frankly, it's, it's almost done. So we, we will do some stress testing, performance testing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I'm happy to take question, and you can see the max split, and then it will do the second step, and it will push down the predicate, blah, 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 and it will join. So the, the join is happening at the Spark level. You know, we are not pushing down join uh, today. Um, so Spark will receive the rows from Oracle and will join with local data. If you are accessing two Oracle tables and you want to join them, you can create a view 
and the view will be the join. So we are not currently uh, uh, supporting join in our software, but we're looking into that. So we will at some point be able to push down join into the RDBMS. But you can use the view to work around that. The view will execute the join on Oracle, and you will only express your query on SPA with the view, the name of the view. Okay, any question? Yes? Um, I saw in the previous slide you could also push this. Um, if, if that's true, does that, because I'm curious, like, if I were to like, select everything, and then map, map a column to something else, and then persist it all down, does that do it all at once? Because I'm, I'm worried it would lack a database, like, it, like, like a production database, if I were to like, read a million columns, map it to something else, and then persist it down. Is there a way to, like, Oh, you can persist. Uh, you, I mean, the data frame, you can persist uh, them and then do it in two steps. Yeah, you could persist. Well, you all, like, the records at once? I'm worried it would the database for, uh, like, production database. But the idea is you only retrieve uh, uh, a small set of rows from the database to SPA. Um, so you, um, so you're talking about uh, persisting the rows when we are retrieving from the database. Well, after after like I do a transfer, like if I were to select something. Yeah, but 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 we we don't want to select all rows. You want to only you want to execute the query against the tables and only retrieve a small set of rows. Okay. So Spark only re receives a small set, the result set. Uh, we don't want to ship data around that because that's, that will be equivalent to what people are doing today where every hour they ship the whole table to SPA. Okay. Yeah. So we, we, send the, as the, we send the query, we rewrite and send to SPA, uh, to Oracle, and only retrieve the result set. So if you have 100, 100 uh, simultaneous connections, you will retrieve uh, data from some of them, and then you do the, the SPAC query coordinator is doing the final, you know, um, you know consolidation. Okay. Uh, because he is the master, he owns the whole plan. We only receive a portion, a portion of the plan, of the execution plan. Okay? So, Uh, uh, the question is, can we be able to write back to the RDBMS? So, in other words, support for you know, pipelines, right? Yeah, so we, no, we have not yet looked into those, but I think it should be possible. Once you have the data frame, everything can be, yes? So we extend the, the, the data source, the out-of-the-box data source uh, with our own classes, you know, threads, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we have not looked into the pipeline and everything you asked, so not yet, no. Thank yeah, thank you. Uh, we have uh, two minutes, yes? Uh, yeah, we can persist data back to the RDBMS if we want to. I mean, we provide that possibility for the Hadoop, and we're looking into that for Spark as well, yes. And uh, how about supporting the latest Spark version? But now you're showing the one Oh, that's for the demo. I mean, this is alpha code. <laughs> no, 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 we will support the Spark 2.x, and we will maybe only support 2.x, no one point something. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Have a good day.